This is day 62 since the Islamist Palestinian Hamas organization carried out a surprise terror attack against Israeli civilians in communities surrounding the Gaza Strip, murdering some 1,400 Israelis and taking more than 240 civilians as hostages into the Gaza Strip, amongst them women, children, toddlers, and the elderly. This is the third day since Israel began pumping water from the Mediterranean Sea into Hamas's underground terror infrastructure in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. This is a game changer in this war against Hamas. Hamas designed its underground terror infrastructure to reach all the way to the Mediterranean Sea. And when the IDF captured the port of Gaza and the rest of the Gaza coastline, it disrupted Hamas's defensive plans. Hamas thought that the IDF will attack from the east, and that's how it designed its underground terror infrastructure. When the IDF carried out its offensive from the north and captured the coastal area, it blocked Hamas's way out. And when it combined forces and completely surrounded Hamas, it forced the terrorists to hide underneath the ground in their underground terror tunnels. Now that the IDF has its water pumps, it can flood out the terrorists, forcing them to come out to the surface and fight the IDF face to face. In these sort of battles, Hamas has no chance at all. As you can see in the map, the IDF is completely surrounding Hamas positions in the northern part of the Gaza Strip. It's only a matter of time since the IDF will completely clear out northern Gaza from Hamas terrorists. But the terrorists are desperate and that's when they're fighting the hardest and without any remorse and any cares for the civilian population of the Gaza Strip. That's also why Hamas called on the Palestinian people to return to their homes during the ceasefire. The IDF's unmanned aerial vehicles are controlling the skies of Gaza and any terrorist that pops out of his hiding position is quickly identified and neutralized by the Israeli drones. Hamas terrorists from the Sajaya and Bet Lachia brigades have joined forces in an attempt to carry out an attack against the IDF troops. After five hours of fightings, the IDF was able to identify their center of operations and carried out an airstrike targeting that particular location. The fighting still continues, but I'm sure that the IDF will quickly neutralize the remaining terrorists. Three kilometers from the Shati neighborhood in the northern part of the Gaza Strip, the IDF uncovered two of Hamas's largest weapon stockpiles since the beginning of this operation. In these stockpiles, the IDF revealed medium-range missiles, long-range missiles, anti-tank missiles, explosive devices, machine guns, and other ammunition. The IDF confiscated all of this weaponry and took it back to Israel in order to understand where did Hamas receive this vast amount of ammunition. The IDF is gaining more grounds in the southern part of Gaza, and Hamas terrorists are focusing their defensive efforts in Khan Yunis. Khan Yunis is a symbol for the Hamas movement in the Gaza Strip because two of its biggest leaders, the terrorists Yehia Sinwar and Muhammad Def, were born in the neighborhood of Khan Yunis. These terrorists are responsible for the murder of Israeli civilians, women, children in the 7th of October and for dozens of years before that. Hamas will fight to protect their symbol. And the IDF knows that. And according to the IDF spokesperson's unit, the Israeli military is advancing special forces and surrounding the area of Khan Yunis in order to destroy Hamas. In the southern part of the Gaza Strip, IDF forces uncovered a Hamas missile launching site that was used by the terrorists to carry out missile attacks against civilians 
and IDF troops in a combined operation between the Israeli Air Force and tank units, the IDF was able to neutralize the site and prevent Hamas from firing additional rockets towards the Israeli civilian population and IDF troops. In his speech, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu stated that the leader of the Hamas terror organization in the Gaza Strip, Yechia Sinwar, is a dead man walking. The IDF spokesperson's unit also hinted that IDF forces are seeking Sinwar and that he's hiding underground. On Israel's northern border, in the battle against the Hezbollah terror organization that is an Iranian proxy that controls Lebanon, Hezbollah launched multiple attacks targeting IDF positions and Israeli locations on the border between Israel and Lebanon. The IDF retaliated by using tanks and artillery fire that targeted the origins of these attacks. The IDF stated that it is researching if the attacks were carried out from Syria as well. An IDF airplane carried out strikes over the skies of Lebanon, neutralizing Hezbollah command positions and other military locations. In Israel's southern front against the Houthis in Yemen, that are also an Iranian proxy, the Houthis launched a missile that targeted the Israeli southern city of Elat. The Israeli aerial defense systems, Aero 3, were able to neutralize the missile in the middle of the air before it entered Israel's airspace. No Israelis were harmed in the Houthi attack. And the Houthis carried out a second attack, a drone attack this time. These drones were intercepted by the United States that has aircraft carriers in the area. As you can see, Israel is battling on multiple fronts. We have Hamas in the Gaza Strip, Hezbollah on Israel's north, in Syria and Lebanon. We have Palestinian terror elements in Judea and Samaria, and we have the Houthis in Yemen. All of these terror elements are supported by Iran. For some reason, the world refuses to believe that Israel is defending itself. What do you think will happen to the Jewish state if we will not fight? Do you think that Israel will still exist without the IDF defending us? The world needs to understand that we are fighting for our lives. Not because we want to. Believe me, I do not want to fight. I want to be home. But we have to defend ourselves. I was encouraged today when I heard a report that the United States started an investigation against the kidnappers of 30 US Israeli citizens that were kidnapped from Israel and were taken as hostages into the Gaza Strip on the 7th of October. We all see what is happening in universities across the United States and in Europe with all these hate crimes against the Jews and against Israel. Finally, the president of Harvard stated clearly that their university will not stand when people are calling for violence and for genocide against others. This is after the US Senate harshly condemned the universities for not taking a stance against these acts. I know that these two acts are not a lot and that they will not change the public opinion of the world towards Israel. But it's a start and I'm an optimistic. I believe that the truth is stronger than any lie. And I believe that all of us should be united in sharing the truth of what is happening in Israel to the rest of the world. This is a battle between good and evil. And we, as believers in God, should stand by the truth. So please help me by sharing what is happening in Israel with the rest of the world so that people will know how to pray for the IDF soldiers, for the Israelis that are fighting these terrorists, Hamas, Hezbollah, the Houthis, and other terror elements in the region, because we are together in this battle against evil. So join me in prayer for the peace of Jerusalem.